This is Joseph Lazito, a father living in Long Island. On February 12, 2011, Lozito left his house and headed into Manhattan to go to his job working in the box office at Alice Tooley Hall. It was something he'd done many times before, but on that particular day, things were different. At Penn Station, Lozito got on the 3 train, intending to exit at West 66th Street. It was 8.45 in the morning, so the train was pretty full, but he found a seat near the operator's compartment. Shortly after, Lozito saw a man pounding on the door that separated the passenger compartment from the operator's compartment. The man was yelling, claiming that he was a cop. The man then turned around. He had an eight-inch knife in his hand, and he told Lazito, you are going to die. Then he lunged. Lazito, who had studied some martial arts and MMA, did a leg sweep and drove his shoulder into the aggressor's waist, taking him down. The aggressor stabbed wildly, slashing Lazito in the back of the head, face, and arm. Eventually, Lazito was able to pin the man to the ground. Lazito then felt a tap on his shoulder and a man's voice told him that they'd take over. That man, Terrence Howell, and his colleague, Tamara Taylor, were NYPD employees. Another subway rider, Alfred Douglas, put pressure on Lozito's wounds to stem his blood loss. Lozito credits him for saving his life. Douglas humbly noted that, I just did what any normal human being would do. The man who had lunged at Lozito and who had caused his injuries was Maxim Gelman. In the preceding 28 hours, Gelman had killed four people, his stepfather, a girl who had rebuffed his advances, the girl's mother, and a pedestrian, and he had injured five others. Howe and Taylor were part of the NYPD contingent searching for Gelman. They had been informed that witnesses had seen Gelman on foot in the subway tunnels between 34th and 42nd Street. They had boarded the three train and were in the operator's cab when Gelman banged on the door. It was from that safe spot that they watched Gelman attack Lazito. When Lazito realized what had happened, that the police present had failed to intervene and chose instead to stay in the operator's compartment, he was, quote, very upset. Lazito later added, when they're looking for Maxim Gelman and Maxim Gelman bangs on the door and says, let me in, I'm a cop, and all you say is, no, you're not, disgraceful. After the incident, Lazito sued the NYPD for not coming to his aid. City lawyers said that even though the police on the train were nearby and knew of Gelman's rampage, they had no special duty to protect Lozito or any individual on the train that day. Weren't Howell and Taylor paid with money taken from their neighbors under the auspices that they would then protect them? Margaret Chan, who was tasked with interpreting the applicability of the related legalese in the Manhattan Supreme Court, sided with the police. That's right, she said that even though the police present did not step in, they were not in the wrong, and Lozito's case was dismissed. But Chan's ruling was not a surprise. She just echoed these other legal land cases that have reached the same conclusion. In Lazito's incident, the police were not minutes away, they were feet away. They knew of Gelman and the threat that he posed, yet they chose to take no action. For this inaction, they faced no repercussions, except perhaps for their own guilty consciences. So, what can be learned? Take a page from Joseph Lazito. Ditch the illusion that someone with a badge will protect you and instead be responsible for yourself. And take a page from Alfred Douglas and look after your fellow human. The more we each do that, the better off we'll all be.